Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another episode of Glass Half Full, a podcast and a safe platform where we talk with a variety of teachers, entrepreneurs, spiritualists, uplifters, givers, shakers, and serenaders. Everyone has a lesson to learn and a lesson to share. Let's use our life experiences to enrich someone's heart, mind, spirit, and soul. Through sharing our experiences, we can be a learning inspiration for one another. I'm your host, Chris Levins. Let's welcome today's guest. Today's guest is Grace Being. Grace Being is a spiritual coach focusing on healing from narcissistic abuse through science and spirituality. Let's give a warm welcome to Grace Bing. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me here. Yes, good morning. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well. We want to thank you for taking some time out to be a guest here on Glass Half Full. We're happy to have you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. Can you tell everyone where you are in the world and what time it is, please? Yeah, so I'm currently in Spain, in Valencia, and it's 9 a.m. here. Ooh, it's early. I hope the weather's nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's really nice and sunny, actually. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're going to jump right on in. I like to ask all my guests this first question. I believe that our lives are in spiritual design. Can you share your life layout or blueprint with everyone? This is how you grew up, where, your family lifestyle? Yes, sure. So I am originally from Malta. It's a very small island in the middle of the Mediterranean south of Italy and I grew up in a two-parent home I have an older sister and I've always had this wanderlust to explore beyond this little island Hmm. so this is what brought me to Spain Mm, nice 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 and bring us all the way up to you being there what you do now Yeah, so I was living in Malta when I was 30 years old. I'm 33 now, so I've been traveling for the last three years. When I was living in Malta, I used to work at the courts of justice, uh, specifically dealing with cases of domestic violence. And then I was a bit of a lost soul. I went on a soul-searching quest, so I changed quite a few jobs, actually. Went into the corporate industry Mm -hmm. until the pandemic hit, and I went through this spiritual transformation, which got me in touch with my life purpose, let's call it. And so I've had this, like, mission to start doing something fulfilling and meaningful with my with my time, which is why I changed my whole career and I got into coaching and helping others, also combined uh, through my own personal experiences. Hmm. Nice. And so what does it mean to be a spiritual life coach? You know, I... We hear lots of people say these, um, I'm, I'm this, this coach, or I'm this kind of coach. Um, what is a spiritual life coach? Can you break that down for us, please? Yes. Um, so my job as a spiritual coach is to provide people with tools, practices, and techniques to guide them on their journey and to help them get in touch with their spiritual self. So we have everything that we need inside of us. It's a matter of learning how to access what we need. Mm. And this is what I do. 
I like that. And I like that you use the word tools, that you're giving us tools, because that's what we need is tools in our toolbox. Um, because when you're not there, when the instructor or the teacher or the coach is not there, what do we do in these situations? We need to be able to dig in that toolbox and pull out something to be able to use in that situation. So I really like that terminology that you've used. It's one of my words as well. Nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a matter of having a one-hour session with someone, with a mentor, a coach, or a therapist even, but you need to learn too so you can continue independently Mm. walking this path. You're right. You're right. Definitely. Can you tell us what has been your greatest spiritual awakening? So my spiritual awakening was a bit dramatic, actually. Uh It was a very intense, (laughs) Um, in a good way. Oh, okay. Okay. I was like holding my breath over here on the side, like, oh, no, Chris. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I was born and raised in a Catholic um, family. But I was turned atheist when I was 18 years old. So I wasn't spiritual. I didn't believe in anything beyond this dimension. Hmm. However, I had started meditating um, in like 2017 to deal with um, the stress and anxiety that I had found myself in. So I was doing it just for biological reasons, let's say. Okay. And... I wasn't aware that this was creating a spiritual transformation within me. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic happened in 2020 Mm -hmm. and my whole identity was shattered. I found myself in a situation where I was losing everything that I had in my life, particularly with regards to my identity, my corporate job, which I was doing back then. And the past relationships, toxic relationships that I had. And uh, I was in quarantine at home. And I decided to start reading this book, which is called A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. I don't know if you're familiar with Oh, we love Eckhart Tolle. Yes, indeed. (laughs) Yes. And as I was reading this book, I had this, like kundalini energy Mm. um, coming up from my the bottom of my spine up to my whole body Um, back then I didn't know it was kundalini energies because I started breathing and educating myself that I learned and my body was filled with goosebumps I had all these aha moments Mm. and really it felt like the veil had been lifted it's like I started perceiving life through a totally different lens and it's like Mm. I could see that there was more to life beyond what we can see beyond this dimension and I became in touch with my my spirit let's say that Mm. and that is how the name Grace Being was born because it's not my birth name my birth name is Graciela but I felt that Graciela had died and the whole new me was born Mm which is why I chose the name Grace Being, because of the way how God's grace helped me become in touch with my inner being. Oh, I love that, Grace. I love that. Yes. (laughs) Woo. Okay. Sorry. Please continue. Please continue. Yes. So, yeah, that was my my profound spiritual awakening. Mm. Um, I had, I passed through these three months of like pure bliss, wanting to stay in solitude, spending time in nature, meditating. Um, my friends and family thought I was going crazy, you know, <laughs> seeing, seeing very weird, you know. <laughs> of course. And it took me some time to adjust to this new me, to this new identity that I was building. And uh, I've been on a, on a journey since then. I've never stopped asking questions, learning more about spirituality, about the universe, about the mystery of life. And yeah, it's been a wonderful journey. Mm. Wow, that's so great. What a great story. What a great story. Have you ever seen um, Eckhart Tolle live? Have you ever gone to any of his workshops or anything? Oh, no. Oh, that would be amazing. 
Oh, uh, a dream come true, I would say. Yeah, I was. Um, I had a guest on um, maybe five episodes ago, um, who had just come back from an Eckhart Tolle thing in Hawaii, and he had just like landed, and then he had come into the interview, and he was just like, oh "My gosh, it was so amazing!" Oh. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, I only wish that I could have the experience to you know, have a workshop oh, wow. because his books and his live talks are amazing. Like, yeah, he's someone special to really shining the light for a lot of us. He's one of many. There's a lot. Um, but I specifically have had lots of eye openers with him. So it was really great to hear that you said his name. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like he's someone true to my heart as well. Like I've I've learned so much from his teaching. So, yeah, that's awesome. So great. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's amazing that you can resonate with his teachings as well. Yes, right? Wow. Can I yes. ask you, in your view, how does spiritual growth contribute to overall mental and emotional well-being? I think they're all interconnected. And okay. that even if someone is not spiritual they would feel like something is not right in their life if they're not growing spiritually. And I think the definition of spirituality sometimes can put people off when you mention spirituality, if they're like atheists. Mm -hmm. um, but really, when we talk about spirituality, we're not talking about religious dogmas that separate and divide people. Spirituality is something universal that unites everyone. And it can be from just like spending time alone in nature or playing your favorite music and connecting with that. It can be creating art hmm. or creating music. So it's really about getting in touch with your spiritual self, with your inner being and letting the creativity flow through you so spiritual growth and emotional well-being really go well together because let's say you have everything in place in your life let's call it like this so you're happy with your job you're emotionally feeling good but you feel like there's something missing in your life this sense of meaning or purpose that is where the spiritual growth needs to come in. So we need to look within ourselves, not outside of ourselves, to find meaning and purpose. Mm. And it will help your emotional well-being naturally. Mm. Of course. Yeah, you're right. That it'll build up. What about the mental? So the mental plays a very strong part in this as well, because... Most of our time is just how we evolved, right? We live most of our time in our head, in our mind. Mm -hmm. And science shows that the brain generate, generates thousands of thoughts every day. But this can be when it becomes almost like compulsive, is the way how Eckhart Tolle explains it as well. It can become like a sickness in itself because the mind starts taking over and we really need to look at the quality of the, of our thoughts, what kind of thoughts we are having. Mm. So having this mental hygiene, let's call it like this is really important to reflect on the kind of thoughts that we are having because they have an impact on our life choices on how we feel as well. And obviously on our spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. So having the time to sit, to slow down, sit quietly with yourself and reflect what kind of thoughts you are having, because most people are just going through life fully identified with these thoughts and mistaking them for being them, fully themselves, the thoughts. You're right. While we forget that our body carries a, a profound intelligence within it that can help us so much in our lives when we learn how to calm down the mind, tap into our body and listen to what our body needs and honoring that. Mm. So we really need to learn how to balance 
these three dimensions because we are multidimensional beings and we forget about the spiritual self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's something that is probably something that's lacked most. Um, I think more in today's time, it's something that's more talked about and a little bit more current um, compared to mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago, people weren't really speaking out so much about it. It was just people who were in the church world that would have been speaking about something like this. But now it's changed over and people are using it in all different areas of life and, you know, different terminology. So it's a little more of a, what we can say in air quotes, woke word now mm -hmm. that people are using. I like that you said sit in the quiet. You know, I feel like there's a lot of things that go down in the quiet. And when mm -hmm. we have that time to be still is when we can really receive some of the answers that we've been asking, you know, and I feel that they are there, but we're fogged sometimes by life and things that we're doing that we can't see clearly or discern what is correct. And in that quiet time, when you sit with yourself, I believe that it can show itself. It comes forward. The mind has a chance to relax. We can meditate giving the chance to really clear our mind and have a, a moment of quiet is essential, is essential. And I love the mental hygiene. I love that word. That was cute. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. I, I agree with what you're saying that we need to slow down and otherwise we can't listen to our intuition to that inner voice mm -hmm. because it's so subtle and graceful you know and we have so much external stimuli all the time that if we're going too fast we're just going to be distracted and we're going to miss out on these powerful messages so true so true nicely put nicely put mm -hmm. earlier you mentioned about the connellini energy i don't know if i pronounced it right about it coming from the spine up through your body at yeah. the time you didn't know what it was can you explain that to us because i was like i don't know what this is <laughs> and i know if i said that then some of the listeners are like what was that like <laughs> so yeah kundalini energy it's something that we all have and it's sitting at the base of our spine and you can see this in the spiritual world where it's portrayed with the symbol of a serpent, like a serpent going up. And funnily enough, even if the, the serpent is the symbol of health, if you look at pharmacies, for example. Yes. Um, this is something that I noticed after. I was like, oh, wow, that actually makes sense. <laughs> wow, now you're uh, so this, Yeah, so this energy that we have is the life force energy and through certain experiences it can start rising and when this kundalini energy starts moving upward you it's like you you ascend into a higher level of consciousness so your your perception has expanded which is why you start seeing things and perceiving the world through a different filter. Mm. And this Kundalini energy can be very powerful. Um, like people can start shaking even. Mm. So if someone ever experiences this, um, it can be very scary if you don't know what it is, but it's just our natural energy. It's like going up through our chakras and it's, it's a vital energy, which it's good that if it's awoken, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and it can happen naturally, like to the natural evolution of humanity, really. Mm -hmm. And it can be triggered to certain experiences or workshops like breath work, for example. I know that some people have these kinds of experiences mm. or to med meditation for a prolonged amount of time. Um, but if for the people who are listening, rather than having the intention to control this energy or try to do it with intention, it would be better if we let things 
naturally unfold mm-hmm. instead of us trying to achieve something because that kind of like inhibits the whole process. Mm-hmm. Like with me, how it happened, I wasn't even aware of these things. And I can see now looking back that it made sense because when we tr- when we try to achieve something, we tend to get in our own way. <laughs> so when we let life take when we let life take care of itself. And okay, we do our spiritual practices, but we let things unfold naturally. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. Wow, that's cool. So, is it a one time thing? Like once you unlock it, then it's open, or is it something that could happen uh, three or four or several times? It could happen, yes, several times oh. because this energy is not going anywhere. It's still in your body and it just continues to expand. So you may have like other mystical experiences where you feel this Kundalini energy moving within you. Hmm. Wow, nice. And it just, you know, because it, it fills your body with goosebumps and you really feel it like, wow, what is this? energy like moving within me you know Mm, nice i mean i you know there's the the feeling that we say about the anointing coming over you like as a person who's in church and you're feeling that the spirit is there and that it has come over you with a sense of chills and um, people start crying or sometimes if someone is singing the anointing is on their voice people start feeling the emotion of it they start crying or they feel the chills and things of that sort as oh, well yes. so I, totally. I can... that is a kind of yeah that is the kind of the kundalini energy exactly mm. okay wow nice nice to have a name that's cool <laughs> thank you for sharing that yeah thank you for sharing that let me ask you how do you guide individuals in maintaining a balance between their spiritual journey and the demands on everyday life you know, there's a lot of things that people are dealing with in the day-to-day life. So uh, I feel that until people become spiritual people where it's naturally a part of their lives, it's something that they are trying to do separately. And so how can you give um, or any recommendations on how people can balance this until they are able to make it as one as part of their life? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. And the It's really about firstly understanding how important this is. So you can start shifting your mindset and rather than seeing it as like a thing that you have to do or you have to fit in in your schedule, for example, it's something that you need. Mm. Because when we understand that it's something that we really need, we start prioritizing our spiritual growth. And... So we learn how to dedicate the time to balance between both our like human side and our spiritual side. So it's really about understanding the importance of having this balance. And we have to start by making effort, right? It's how you start when you start doing something new. Mm -hmm. You need to start making conscious effort to, let's say you want to start learning a new skill you have to dedicate time in your day to study the skill to practice Mm -hmm. and the same goes for spiritual growth so we dedicate time yes to do our things which are also important but to dedicate some time to slow down to get in touch with ourselves with our inner being to connect with ourselves Mm -hmm. because ultimately it will improve the quality of your life And when you start seeing these spiritual practices or having this quiet time with yourself, the same as you would brush your teeth every morning. It's something that becomes automated. You Mm -hmm. don't think about it. You just do it. So let's say you want to start meditating and you commit to yourself that you're going to start doing five minutes. Everyone can fit in five minutes. Everyone has 24 hours in the day. So it's really a matter of your priority, yes. your priorities. And having these five minutes every day, ideally at the same time, it starts becoming a habit. It starts becoming like a routine for you. And then you can gradually extend the meditation time, step by step. Hmm. I like that. You're right, step by step. 
you know, a lot of people want an instant, but it's true. If you, you have to make the effort, number one, you know, there's no, <laughs> fortunately, there's yeah. nothing we can take to make it magically happen, but you're right. And then it will become part of the norm of what it is that you're doing. So I like that. Thank you. That was a great answer. It's a great answer. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you, who's around you that keeps you motivated? Um, so my, my partner, actually, he, he's really always cheering for me. He's very positive minded as well. Hmm. And when I'm like struggling with my own personal stuff or like dealing with my family or wanting to achieve a goal and I'm struggling, he's always there cheering for me, uplifting me. And yeah, I really appreciate that actually. Oh, that's nice. We do need a team player. Definitely somebody. If you're going to be with somebody, right, you can say people say I can do bad all by myself, you know. So if we're going to be together, we need to feel that we're working on the same accord and going through. Um, is he a spiritual person or was he a spiritual person before he met you or since he's met you become a spiritual person as well? Um, no, actually, <laughs> he's uh, quite the opposite. He's not a spiritual person. Person. and um, I try to share these things with him <laughs> <having some> discussions <laughs> but uh, so he's open to listening oh well, that's but nice he doesn't yeah he, he doesn't resonate with what I'm saying but what I like is that he is always up for discussion and like asking me questions and always willing to learn so I really I enjoy that about him Oh, that's nice. You know, and this is it. Everybody's not going to be instantly on the bandwagon exactly what we do. But I think in being open to be able to listen and um, just to receive it is nice enough. Definitely. That is very fair. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, how do you tailor your approach to accommodate individuals with different spiritual beliefs? Or backgrounds yeah so I always take that into consideration because people have different cultural and uh, spiritual and religious backgrounds um, so instead of like trying to impose my beliefs on them mm -hmm. I like to provide them with the tools to practice and so they can find out for themselves rather than having me explaining to them certain things. Because I feel like even through my own personal journey, when someone tells me something and I haven't experienced it myself, I can be very skeptical about it. <laughs> but... <laughs> That's fair, right? That's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when someone starts and embarks on their own quest using these spiritual tools and practices, mm -hmm. they will become in touch with their own spiritual self. And what's more beautiful and true than that, having the person experience it for themselves. Mm. You're right. Then you know for sure what exactly what you're dealing with, you know. Exactly. There's no sense exactly. of surprise about what people say, you know. But you're right, the, having this, the real deal experience of it does make the difference. Mm, nice. Can you give us a little bit about what might happen in a session with a client? Can you break, like, how does it go? Um, do they just come in and say, this is what I'm dealing with? Or what happens with you in a, a client situation that might happen in a session? Yeah, so... Generally, the the person starts talking to me about their situation, where they're currently at, what they are struggling with, mm -hmm. and I assess the situation. Then I, I like to have a discussion with them by asking mindfully to plant questions, okay, according mm -hmm. to what they said uh -huh. and the the aim is to help them shift their perspective or in, introduce to them a new perspective 
Hmm. So rather than me telling them, I think this would be helpful or this is happening, um, asking the, really the right questions to help them have these aha moments mm-hmm. where they can start seeing things to a different perspective because that's really when the change happens, not when someone tries to give us advice and it's like we, we just, the advice is hitting us in the face and bouncing back to the other person. Mm. But it's really when we start shifting our perspective. And then I teach them tools and we do visualization exercises or body scan meditation or loving kindness meditation. It depends on the situation. And in between sessions, I give them tasks to practice as well so they can start incorporating these tools in their daily life. Mm -hmm. And so by the time that we end our program working together, they have created these new habits Mm. so they can continue working on themselves after we finish working together. Mm, That's excellent. 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 Yes, because we need it when you're gone. When Grace is not there, what would Grace do? (laughs) We want to feel like we can dig in that toolbox and be like, she'll pull out this one and that's what I'm going to pull out too and use it. Oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you for giving the breakdown because I I just wanted like, well, what's happening, you know, in in a session of this styling that people are coming in and how long is usually a session lasting? Is it at 60 minutes? Is it longer, hour and a half? Or is it tailored a case by case for what people are asking for? Yes. Yeah, so usually if the person decides to work with me long term, so between three to six months, we would have 60 minute sessions. Is this once and a week? Yes, it would be once a week. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, then for the six months, one, the first three months, we would have once a week. And then after that, we would have them bi weekly. Okay. And yeah, and uh, some people would like to have sometimes just uh, an intense session with a one off session, Mm -hmm. and that would be 90 minutes. So we can have more time to go a bit deeper Mm. since it's a one time session. Nice. Well, I like the variety because, you know, to me, it's this is it. Some people feel like I just need a one time get in. And then some people are like, I need this, I need to be pulled on every week or, you know, coming more often, um, as well as my job too. When I see my clients, they're coming in mostly every week. Some people are every two weeks and then people who are traveling far doing the 90 minutes, maybe once a month or something of that sort. So it's nice to have a variety. Yeah. Are you doing this online as well as in person? So I've only been doing this online okay. because I've been traveling so much, but I, I would really like to have something set up here locally as well since I settled in Spain. Mm-hmm. I think I would like the combination of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be great. Or a workshop, right, where you can gather a lot of people together yeah. and, and do something like that would be really awesome. Definitely. Mm. Well, we yeah, see some so future things, has- right? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was saying it's so nice to have the connection face to face sometimes, you know. So true. Yeah. You're right. Just to, to to be there, you can see the expressions in the moment. It's, you know, that tangibility is really nice. I agree. I agree with it. I said, well, we have a few things for the future then, definitely for, for Grace being in some workshops in Spain. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me ask you, what's something that many people don't know about you? <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, hold um, up. <laughs> something yeah. that you can reveal. <laughs> something you can reveal for us. <sighs> yeah. Um, You're like I baking cookies that's... at night or something like, you know, something of that sort. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm addicted to chocolate. That's just true. Me too. I'm there with you then. I'm there. (laughs) Um, But on a deeper level, I think that most people, I get this a lot. They tell me, oh, wow, like you're so brave or like, wow, you're not scared. And actually, most of the time, I'm very scared. (laughs) I have... 
I yeah, I have a lot of fears as well. Mm. Um, but since I had this like spiritual transformation and having learned these spiritual tools, I think that they really helped me to work through the fear mm. and not let it stop me from going for it and doing what I want and working on achieving my goals, no matter how scary it may seem. So, yeah, I think that people mistaken when they see people being out there chasing their dreams, etc., that they don't have fears. But actually, yeah, I do. I do have fears as well. Mm. Oh, thank you for that honesty. Thank you for that honesty. And, you know, yeah. sometimes when we do see people in leadership positions, we just feel that they have somehow they are heroes and they've kind of cut out this human part that we are feeling as the client or the person who's sitting there. And, you know, thank you for sharing that. Like, no, I am you. I am human, too. I am working always yeah. to be better. I'm working always to be more. That just because I'm at this position that somehow I'm not feeling these things, I have just have the tools in my toolbox to know how to deal with it when they arrive. You know, so thank you for yeah. sharing that. I appreciate you sharing your truth on that for that. Nice. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> um, do you have any advice for anyone who is living a false life? And I say false life, meaning that they're not living who they're supposed to be. They're not in the lane that they're supposed to be. Now, if they know it or not, I don't know. That's a case by case. But they know something's not right and they know that mm -hmm. what they've been doing is not right. Do you have any advice for anyone who's living this false life? Yeah. Um, I think that it would be wise to sit down with yourself and reflect on your choices, why you've made those choices. Are you trying to please someone else? Are they aligned with your truth? Asking questions like, who am I really? Mm. What matters to me in life? What do I really want to achieve? What would make me happy? Am I playing a role that society influenced me with? And this might be dark for some people, but a really strong motivator that I found is reflecting on the end of your days. So. Mm. We know that everyone is going to die, right? Mm -hmm. As sad as that is. True. But really reflecting that maybe when you're on your deathbed, looking back on your life, how are you going to feel? Mm. Will you have regrets? Will you be proud of the kind of life that you led? Right. And that can be really motivating for people because then it's too late, right? Mm -hmm. That's really scary. It's too late. You can't do anything about it. But now, no matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. You're here, you're alive, you have the power to change your life if it's not aligned with your truth. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was good. <laughs> we do. I see you like reflecting. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You're right, you're right. We have the power. We have the power. And you know, that's it. Sometimes people are really confused that they don't have the power. And I would say, well, if mm -hmm. you don't have the power, then who has it? <laughs> you know, we waiting, you waiting yeah. for somebody <laughs> else. They waiting, you know, folks are just waiting. You know, we have to claim what is ours, you know, and have that authority to know that we are, we are okay to be able to have the authority and to claim what's ours, you know, that we have that power and that right. So, yeah, this is, this is an important tea. Definitely, definitely. Um, do you have any examples of any successful transformations or breakthroughs through your clients? Um, something that you could possibly share in a different sense that in the time that you've been doing this where you feel like, oh my gosh, you know, this one specific instance of something happened was the major, like a huge, even surprising for you about the transformation that might have happened with a client and the work that you were doing? Um, yeah, actually. There was this particular woman that I was working with her and she was in a narcissistic relationship for over 24 years. Wow. 
and yeah and uh, she just couldn't see herself leaving the relationship because of the children because of the financial dependence on her partner mm -hmm. and she was really struggling with her mental health and dealing with all of this but after working together and of course it was challenging it was messy you know but finally when she was able to leave the relationship start her a whole new life a whole new chapter mm. she literally felt reborn she got into spirituality as well and that was like the best outcome for me mm. and when she told me like thank you so much you changed my life that is like just i was in tears oh, you know that's this so wonderful. is my heart <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So the bonus was that she got really in touch with her spiritual self, not just exit the relationship, hmm. and that realized that she has the power to change her life. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, mm -hmm. this is it. You know, we give out the tools and you give out things, and it's so rewarding to see when people are going and they actually get it and they use it and they do change their lives you know as a teacher or coach it's the most wonderful thing that people have entrusted mm -hmm. you um with something so special and something so personal for them um and that you have helped them to turn it around and now their lives are better than they ever could imagine i mean wow you can't it's a priceless moment it's a priceless moment um, and that is the reward, yeah. you know, that we reap. It's not, you know, teaching is never a rich job, you know. You never go into it to be a rich person. <laughs> but the rewards <laughs> of it are so great when people can go and use the things you do and come back with these success stories. It really gives you the fire and fuel to know, like, this is right. I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, this work is right. So that's so awesome. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Yes. So what do you Definitely. do to ma <laughs> what do you do to maintain good mental health? We know you meditate because we heard you you talk about it. But is there anything else that mm -hmm. you do? Uh yes, actually. So I work from home mostly and I found that I needed to create like a schedule and a routine to stick with it because otherwise I found myself um, overworking, oh. like I'd just be sitting at home and just working on my laptop and that was affecting my mental health actually. Wow. So, yeah, so I learned how that I needed to be disciplined with myself that even when I'm doing something that I enjoy, I need to rem remember taking care of myself as well. Hmm. So now I have a schedule where in the morning I wake up, I get in touch with myself, reflect how I'm feeling. I set the intentions for the day of what I want to achieve. And then I go on with, with my day. And working out has really helped me with my mental health as well. So after I finish my working day, I go and I move my body. And it really helps. It releases endorphins in the body. It lifts up my mood. And sometimes, you know, when I'm feeling a bit low, and I don't feel like working out, I remind myself that after I'm going to feel better. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that I find the effort to do it because afterwards I do feel better. I do so feel true. more energized and uplifted. Mm -hmm. So that really helps with my mental health working out. Mm, nice. I agree with you as well as the working out. And, you know, it does. When the weather gets cold, for me, it's harder to work out just because it's more effort compared to when it's warm. Mm -hmm. And so you're right. But once you can convince yourself to just do it, when I finish, I always like, I'm so glad that I did it. Like, you know, but getting there sometimes yeah. can, <laughs> can really be <laughs> a little bit hard. So I understand your feeling about mm -hmm. that for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the guests that I had said, you know, even if you just put on your workout clothes and don't go anywhere, you should still give yourself shine. You should still pat yourself on the back to say, yeah. you know what, maybe next time I'll actually get out the door and go and do it. But at least I did put on the workout clothes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a step forward. <laughs> I said, well, hey, right, just a step by step, you know. 
I laugh, but yeah, I guess so. I guess it's better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing. I always like to close with asking this last question to my guest. Is your glass half empty or half full? Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, my glass is half full. Yes, that is my perception that I walk with through life most of the time, at least. Hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah, everybody has a different answer. I don't think there's a right or wrong. It's just, it is your perspective always about it. So, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Um, so, my final thoughts would be to really take the time to connect with their inner being, to reflect on their life choices, the quality of their thoughts, and to realize that whatever is feeling off in their life, whatever is not working out for them, to know that they do have the power to do something about it and change it. Mm. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We've got so many great little lines and things today and, and tools that we can add into our toolbox that you have given us today. So thank you so much. Can you tell everyone how they can reach you if they are interested to find out more about you? Yeah, so they can reach me through my website, gracebeing.com, or through Instagram, which is grace.being, and they can easily find me there. Excellent. And that's grace with a hyphen in between being.com for the website. Um, and all of this information will be listed um, when the episode is aired, so they'll be able to find it there as well um, with your Instagram page as well on that. Thank you so much, Grace, for being a guest today Thank on Glass you. Half Full. We are so happy to have Thank had you. Chris. Yes, you're so I welcome. I really enjoyed <laughs> Oh, we appreciate it in the early morning in Spain. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You take care. You have an awesome day, and we appreciate your time and energy today. Thank you. You too, Chris. Take care. Yes, you as well. Bye bye. Hello, listeners of Glass Half Full. Thank you for tuning in to another inspiring episode of our podcast. I'm your host, Chris Levins, and I want to express my gratitude to each and every one of you for being a part of our supportive community. Remember, Glass Half Full is not just a podcast. It's a safe platform for everyone to share their life experiences. Your stories and voices matter. And we appreciate you being here with us. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to stay updated with our future content, please subscribe, follow, and rate our podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube. Your support means the world to us, and it'll help us reach even more listeners who can benefit from these valuable life experiences. As we wrap up this episode, always keep in mind you are blessed. No matter the challenges you face, there's a reservoir of strength within you. Until next time, stay positive. And remember, the glass is always half full. See ya!